Now that we've derived the diffusion equation, let's give a physical derivation of the diffusion coefficient itself. And this derivation is based on the connection with kinetic theory and with particle conservation. So let's first start with a statement of particle conservation. Imagine that we have a gas of particles, and let's ask how in a particular volume V, the number of particles changes. So we have a volume V. Also, I'm going to define a surface associated with this volume V. So there's the surface area. And one normally defines an outward normal surface element, ds vector. So how does the number of particles change inside of this volume? So dn by dt. And the way it can change is because there is a flux of particles uh, passing through the bounding surface. And so the conservation statement is that it's equal to minus j dot ds, where j is the uh, current density. Notice the sign here that if we have an outward normal and an outward going flux, that means that the particle number is going down. So for j parallel to ds, outward flux, the number of particles is decreasing, and so this should be with a minus sign. Now I use, uh, I guess, the divergence theorem and write this on the left, on the right hand side, instead of a surface integral j dot ds, I can write this as divergence of j dot dv. Whereas on the right hand side, I can write this as the integral d by dt of the total number of particles is nothing more than the concentration at position r in time t. And since we're and, and then integrated dv. Since our integrands are over the same domain, we then have the statement that dc by dt is equal to minus del dot j. So this thing is known as the continuity equation, and it's a starting point to uh, actually derive the diffusion equation itself. So this is a statement of particle conservation. Next feature that we need is to now make a connection with kinetic theory and look a little bit more microscopically at the behavior of a gas. So let's think of a classical gas, and we should think of each molecule as like a billiard particle that's just moving in a straight line trajectory until it collides with somebody else. And the motion of the particles is caused by thermal agitation, so you th should think of your gas of particles as being in a large box that's being shaken externally. And because of that shaking, then particles are endowed with some velocity, and they undergo elastic collisions with their neighbors. So how far does a particle go before it collides with anybody else? So let's, use, so let's now derive something known as the mean free path, which is a measure of how far a particle goes before it collides with anybody else. So let's think of a single molecule, and it's moving at some velocity v. And as it moves without collisions, it will sweep out something known as a collision tube. So we have a tube whose volume is given by the cross-sectional area of the molecule times the length of the tube. And the uh, criterion for the mean free path is that when the length of the tube times the area of the tube, so that's the volume of the tube, times the density of particles when this is of the order of 1, that means that a collision has occurred. So we therefore infer that the mean free path is typically of the order of 1 over c times sigma, where c is a particle concentration and sigma is the uh, cross-sectional area of a molecule. Last step now is let's determine the current by kinetic theory. So the picture one should have in mind here is that instead of having a homogeneous gas, let us suppose that there is a slight gradient in the concentration of particles. So let's imagine that as a function of some spatial coordinate z, there is a concentration c that depends on z. And so because of the fact that there's an imbalance in concentration, because of molecular collisions, this concentration imbalance will slowly relax away. And as you're going to see, the relaxation of this current imbalance gives us a, 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 an expression for the current as a function of the gradient in the concentration. So let us focus attention at a particular height z. And let's look at two nearby planes 
a distance one mean free path away. So at z plus l and at z minus l. So here we have concentration c at z minus l, c at z plus l, and c at, at, at concentration z. And what I want to compute now, or estimate, is the flux, the net flux of particles through the plane z because the fact because of the fact that the concentration to z plus l and z minus l are not identical. So let me now compute the upgoing flux. And so I argue that the upgoing flux is uh, the concentration at z minus l times the velocity over 6. Where do these different terms come from? So what I would argue is that for particles that are going to cross the plane z coming from below, uh, I'm saying that everybody in a region that's one mean free path below z will pass a plane z without suffering a collision. And um, I'm replacing the varying concentration by the concentration at one mean free path below. And then the flux of upgoing particles in a three-dimensional system, I'm arguing roughly speaking that one-third of one-sixth of the particles are moving up, one-sixth down, one-sixth to the left, one-sixth to the right, one-sixth out of the paper, one-sixth into the paper. So one-sixth of all the particles are moving up. And then the flux of particles, the number of particles passing per unit area per unit time will be the concentration at z minus l times the velocity times this geometrical factor of 1, 6 to account for the relative fraction of particles that are passing up. By the same line of reasoning, j down is going to be c at z plus l v over 6. So the net current or is just the difference in the upgoing and downgoing currents. And so this is going to be equal to v over 6 c at z minus l minus c at z plus l. And so this is do, doing a first order Taylor expansion minus v l over 3 dc by dz. More generally, uh, well, so this I can therefore define as minus d dc by dz. So this is the fundamental relation between the current and the concentration gradient. And in fact, in kinetic theory, all types of transport laws have this generic form. Namely, the flux of some property is equal to a transport coefficient times the gradient in the concentration. And in this formula, the diffusion coefficient d is of the order of v bar or v thermal velocity times l uh, times some numerical coefficient, which doesn't matter here. So now we have a microscopic derivation of what is the diffusion coefficient in terms of microscopic parameters of the gas. The final step is now we can use this information to uh, again uh, obtain the diffusion equation because starting from our continuity equation we have dc by dt is equal to minus divergence of the current but the divergence of the current is the gradient of uh, the concentration and so in arbitrary dimensions we replace dc by dz by the gradient of the current and what we get here is d Laplacian of c. So this is a microscopic, uh, a very rough microscopic derivation of the diffusion equation starting with uh, particle conservation and kinetic theory.